What's up everyone? Today I'm going to be doing the Fuse 27 relocation kit on my 2012 Ford Raptor. Uh, there's the part number, what comes in the kit. You get the wire, some heat shrink, a new fuse, uh, some stickers for the fuse location, and some super simple instructions. Here's kind of the tools that I'll be using today. I'll put a list of these down below. Just so you've got them, you know, you got everything and ready to do the job. All right, after you get your hood open, first thing you're going to do is come to your fuse box here and pop it open. Just a couple little tabs there. And the fuse 27 is this yellow 20 amp right there. Actually, mine's burnt, so it's a good thing I'm doing this now. A uh, way to check to see if this has been done or not is that fuse will probably be pulled out. And then there will be an, a fuse right in this location. All we're doing is we're changing the size of the fuse itself. It's still a 20 amp. It's just one of these larger 20 amp fuses. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and pull this fuse out and see what it looks like. So a fuse is really easy to pull. Um, some vehicles, the fuse box will have like a little puller with them. I'm just going to use my needle nose. Um, but just grab it, wiggle a little bit, and should cup right out. Then you can see there, maybe, that is burnt. And that's exactly why Ford came out with this kit. So the very first thing we're going to do is just connect our battery on the power side. Um, while it's dirty, I'm going to have to clean that. That's just 8 millimeter. Loosen it up a little bit and just give it a couple of twists and pull up at the same time and it's off. Just kind of tuck it up out of the way. Make sure it doesn't touch on any metal. And then after that you undo the power cables at the fuse box. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is just disconnect this power cable running to the fuse box. <clears throat> this will prevent us from shorting anything out while we're cutting all stuff away. That's just a 10 millimeter socket, quarter inch ratchet was completely fine. Make sure you set your nut off somewhere safe. Pull your posts off here, and then I've got a nice towel that I'm going to wrap them up in. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull the fuse box out of its little bracket here. It's pretty easy. There's just four little clips here, two in the front and two in the back. Just pry the plastic away a little bit, pull up. And that will allow you to get it off the rest of the way. Just like that. I'm actually going to take this harness off the front here. So you can see I pulled the... There's a little white pin there, pulled out of that hole. <clears throat> Just makes it easier to get into the box. Once you have it up, kind of disconnected from its bracket, there's these little clips here. There's eight of them, and it's the same thing with these. You just kind of pry it back a little bit. You see the top will start to pull away. Just keep pulling up on these clips, and the bottom will start to separate here. So there's tape on both ends of this bottom or on the harness on this side and on this side 
I actually cut the tape and that gave me a lot more room to wiggle this around. All right, so if we count our fuses up here, we have one row, two row, three rows where that wire came, or that fuse came out of, and it's the second one over. So when we're underneath here, it's gonna be the same thing. These wires here is in the first row. The second row is here where this big white and red wire is at. And then this is our third row. This blue and red wire. Right here. That's the one we want. That's in our second position on that third row. <clears throat> So I'm, it's kind of confusing because there's two blue and red wires, but we want the bigger of the two there. I'm just going to kind of pull that out a little bit. Give me some room here. And all we're going to do is cut that wire right there. So got my wire snips here. So just make sure you only cut that one wire. <clears throat> Give it a snip. Just kind of pull your ends out so they're easier to work with. So the first thing we're going to do is this wire that came, that's still going up to the fuse spot, put a little piece of the heat shrink on it that Ford provided. And then heat it up. I use a lighter, you could use a little propane torch, a heat gun, whatever you've got laying around, a hair dryer would work. But you just want it to shrink down on that wire. Just kind of pinch it off. It's There's no power going to it. I think it's just kind of a safety thing. They don't wanted to accidentally touch something with power but just get the end of it covered up that's all that really matters there next thing we're going to do is with the other end of that blue and white wire go ahead and strip off a little bit of it About a half inch like that is fine. <clears throat> Give it a good twist. Then you're going to take your new wire here. It's already stripped on one end. So I'll go ahead and pull that off the rest of the way. I'm actually going to trim this. It's really long. Use your wire cutters and trim it up. Give that a good twist as well. Take the other piece of heat shrink that you get with the kit, put it on the end. Then you're going to take these two wires and twist them together. If you've never used a soldering iron before, it's pretty simple. It just looks like a screwdriver that you plug in. I've had it plugged in for a little bit to get it warmed up. But you just touch a little bit of solder to the tip of it. And then you hold it underneath your wires. And what it does is it's going to heat the copper up on those wires. And once it's warm, we'll put our solder on top. And the solder will get pulled down into those wires. All 
All right, that was taking forever. So I just did it off camera, but you see there, it's a nice, tight, solid connection. Then you take this and just kind of fold it over on the wire. Slide your piece of heat shrink down over top. You want to make sure that the heat shrink, or your, your solder I guess, is about right in the middle of your heat shrink. Okay, I wasn't happy with the way I did that before at all. So I pulled the red and blue wire out over to the side and redid my solder. <clears throat> and like I said, you just slip the heat shrink over top of it. Get your solder right in the middle. Heat it up to melt it. And then that wire is done. So our new fuse location is number 70 here, which on our fuse box is this one right here. So it's going to be hard to see underneath here, but basically you just take the spade terminal and you're going to push it up into the hole right by this gray and red wire. And once that's in, I'm going to pop my fuse in, put it all back together, and then we'll test it. See, I, you heard it click, maybe, and then just give it a couple tugs. Make sure it's staying in there the way it's supposed to, and it is. So now we'll just put it all back together. There, it's all clipped back onto the bottom. Clip it down into the bracket. open her up and put her fuse in in this spot right here there's that spade terminal that wasn't there before if you look at this one there's still not a spade there so got it in the right spot they provide you with the new 20 amp fuse that's made for that just clip that in and we're gonna hook our then we're gonna hook our power wire back up to our fuse box. Put them up. Again, it's a ten millimeter. Doesn't need to be super tight, so quarter inch ratchet's completely fine. Reconnect our battery. Now we just have to reconnect our battery. I went and cleaned up my post and the connector. That's the eight millimeter socket. You like to twist a little bit, make sure it's not loose. Put your cover back on, and we'll start it up, see if it runs. Well, that's all there is to it, guys. You heard it running and got all my tools cleaned up. 
you just want to put a sticker up here that way if you sell it they know it's done if you take it to the dealership to get work done to it they know that that's done really pretty simple job other than needing a couple of special tools but honestly a soldering iron even a decent one's probably only 15 20 bucks and the rest of it's just your basic hand tools that you should have laying around so thanks everybody for coming along while we learn how to do this make sure you like the video subscribe share check out the other videos that we've got and have a great day